So fast forward a few years, your first producing job, what was it? What did it teach you? How did you get it? So uh, I guess my first producing job out of school um, happened, I, I had met, uh, met up with an old friend, um, uh, Jesse, who um, became my producing partner. Uh, for 11 years, we were producing partners. And so we had met up and, uh, uh, and having lunch or hanging out or whatever. And he said, he said, you know, I'm doing music videos. You know, how would you feel about directing a music video? Because I had done a little bit of directing in college. And I'm like, you know, I wasn't sure that's what I wanted to do. Like, you know, do I really have a passion for directing? And I, and I said, I don't really know music videos that well. Um, what if I just produced it with you and kind of, you know, sort of got my bearings and really saw what it was about. And, you know, I felt like I was good putting stuff together. Um, and then, you know, as I work on it, if there's a specific area that I really like, we can, you know, maybe I can discuss with you. And if it's directing, if it's something else, I can, you know, discuss that with you. So this first music video was for a, for a group called The Real Seduction. They're like an R&B group. They were, they were MC Hammer's like backup singer, dancers, you know, the guys like behind right. them that uh -huh, would be doing nice. the whole, they, they started their own R&B group. And, um, and I, yeah, so I remember like he had hit them up for, I can't remember what the budget was, five or six grand, 6,500 bucks maybe. And back then everything was 35 millimeter. There was no, this stuff was not being shot on digital video, not at least at a professional level. Um, so we were doing 35 mil. And um, as I started working with him, I mean, I realized somebody needs to actually physically put this together. I didn't at the time really understand the difference between a line producer, a UPM, a producer. I'm just like, I just know somebody needs to put this together. So I just sort of jumped into that line producer UPM role and started like finding crew and booking the equipment and we got to find locations and we hired a director. Um, and I was like, man, I like this because I get to be part of, of everything. I get to be part of every single part of the process as opposed to just one. Um, and, you know, throughout post, even long after the director's gone, you know, I get to, you know, all the way through delivery uh, to the client, I get to be part of the whole thing. So, so that music video was the start, I think, of my interest. I hadn't necessarily decided for a fact that, yes, 100% I want to produce, but I started liking it. I started liking that hands-on, like, wow, this is cool. I get to make... I'm the one, I'm the guy that's making the decisions. I get to say yes or no. You know, I, I, it was very creative. Um, it was a very creative position. Um, and so from there, I think it sort of um, escalated and we started doing, once you have one music video and you can show it to a band and they're like, oh wow, this is great. We got five grand, do I? So my partner and I were running around Sunset Boulevard hitting up bands at clubs and however we could meet them uh, hustling. We were, we were hustling and that's how we, um, that's how we started, just doing music videos. Where would you find the crew and the, you know, the directors and things? Where, where, like, where were you actually finding it? Well, yeah. So yeah, back then there wasn't all these, nets, you know, social, there was no social networks and there wasn't um, things like that. I mean, I guess a lot of it was, if I remember it was like so long ago, word of mouth. I'm trying to think how I first built up my crew relationships. I, I guess a lot of it was word of mouth. So Jesse had already been down in LA for a year. So, you know, I know he, he knew some people's like, hey, you know, I got this director, I think he can do it. And that director had a DP, so it's like, oh, make sure, I need my little database, okay, make sure that I lock that guy, the DP's info in for future. And then that DP's like, oh, I'll bring out my team. And then, oh, hey, there's some ACs. And, you know, so a lot of it is just networking and word of mouth. Um, you know, I think a lot of it probably also was going to events and things. Um, so ne networking events and, um, some of it was some of it's school, you know. I mean, there there are people that you go to school with. I mean, I went to UCLA in '01, about a year after I moved down to LA. So um, there were definitely some. Once you're in a master's level program, a lot of those people are. That's what they're going to be doing. It's not like they're chemistry majors, but they really want to do something else. I mean, once you're mass in a master's program, it's usually like that's your career trajectory. So. Um, I, met, I did meet actors and DPs and production designers and stuff at UCLA, and I think that also um, helped, you know, helped me grow my uh, crew base. Uh, so it's a lot of, yeah, it's relationships. When you went to these clubs or events on the Sunset Strip, I mean, were you going to like Gazaris or maybe I'm dating myself with that one, but the Rainbow and, and, and the Roxy, room, right, okay. Viper and room, so, the Derby, the uh, right, okay. Coconut Room, I don't think that's around anymore, but yeah, I think right, right. you and I probably both. Yeah, could. I think the FM station, I'm probably dating myself with that one, but yeah, there, oh. I think that was almost like post 
you know, that was more grunge era, but we're... Yeah, a little after the grunge mm-hmm. era, but there was still a lot, um, like the Key Club, I don't think that's right, around anymore. Right, 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 right. Yeah, so... And what was your approach at these... You were just, you know, I mean, it was easy to talk to people. There was no phones. People weren't pulling out phones, no to, phones to, no. to take a selfie with. I, I mean, I, there was... Cell phones, I think, started getting popular in 01 with the small flip phones, yes. but it wasn't as prevalent now because all you did on it was make phone calls. Sure. Mm-hmm. It wasn't texting and video and internet. Right. So, yeah, it wasn't as intrusive, but... Um, my partner was more the, not, not gregarious, He's not the, he, he, he was a good opener, he was a good schmoozer. So he did a lot of that, if, um, not, not to uh, in any way compare our careers because, but just as an analogy, Jerry Bruckheimer and Don Simpson, they're like, Phew. but Simpson was very much that kind of schmoozer and idea guy and he'd go out and he'd, you know, um, sort of he was a good opener you know um and jerry Bruckheimer was more is more like the hands-on management day-to-day you know get it done guy and i think that was also jesse and i had that same kind of relationship so he would really go out and mine the opportunities and then i would come in and sit down and do meetings when it was time to talk logistics so if jesse was out at a club and he met a band, he'd give him his business card, and hey, we could do a video, and then they'd call him back and say, hey, we're really excited, da, da, da. and Jesse would kind of schmooze him a little bit on the phone, and then we would both go in, maybe go back to the club and meet with them, and I would talk to him about, here's how I think we can actually pull it off, and the more videos I did, obviously, the more confident I got um, doing that, so I really let Jesse open it, and then I think I would close it with the execution Here's how we're going to execute it. How can you do a video for five grand? Well, here's how we can do it. We get great crew rates. We got relationships with this, and we, you know, we can use short ends for the film and da da da, like all this kind of stuff. And they're like, okay, cool. They start to see how it could be done, you know. Like the two Steves. We were just talking about that earlier. Steve Jobs, Steve Wozniak. So one had one set of duties, the other had the other, and it worked, right? They had two sets of skills, and right. yeah, and they and they, I think, just like like a marriage, you know, it's mm-hmm. two people that can bring you know, two different things to the table and make each other better in the process. I think that's what, you know, Jesse and I were able to do is two complementary but different skills that made us better as a whole. 